Hello everybody, this is the Diatone GTR90 micro quadcopter which I found in my mail today. There is already a ton of videos out there introducing or reviewing this quad. However, this special one here on my desk seems to be the new version for which I couldn't find um, any helpful videos so far. The new version features a couple of upgrades which I think are worth mentioning. So if you haven't made up your mind yet or if you just want to know in which direction Diatone is heading in their innovative development, then this short video is for you. As of today, you can purchase the Diatone GTR90 for around 135 euros or 145 US dollars at Banggood, for instance. And uh, here the depicted photos seemingly still show the old version. Uh, if we take a look here, um, they are still showing the stock propellers, which are some sort of bullnose style. And then there's the flight controller on top of the stack and a current sensor backpacked to the um, ST30 connector here. Here is another view showing the motor cables as they are routed to the 4-in-1 ESC in the middle of the stack. Note the somewhat awkward installation giving rise to frightening close proximity to the props running next to them. Let's have a closer look at the new version now. The stack is changed over to a more conventional style with a 4-in-1 ESC at the bottom, the flight controller in the middle and the TBS Unify video transmitter on top of the stack. The motor wires are led in front of or back of the stack columns respectively, creating a considerably cleaner installation uh, with a larger clearance for the props. Installing the video transmitter on top of the stack facilitates a better installation of the VTX antenna, which is now mounted on the top and which can easily be bent up uh, to an angle like this by maybe uh, fixing it with another zip tie up here. Taking a look from the back, we note a pre-installed capacitor, yeah, which is nice to have. And interestingly, Diatone switched over to an onboard current sensor here, which is positioned on the 4-in-1 ESC and not on the ST30 connector anymore. The package includes a couple of extras. Um, we've got the prop guards here. Um, I guess there's nothing new with them. Um, but they include a different style of propellers now, which come in clear plastic um, and are labeled to be 1940s, which is sort of surprisingly small. Um, I ordered these Jamfam Houties 2040, three-bladed. Uh, which fit perfectly well and are probably the best way to go. So there's enough clearance all the way through. In a second bag, um, we find the usual goodies like uh, extra zip ties, um, spare screws and uh, rubber bands and so on. But most interestingly, uh, Diatone includes a buzzer now, which was an ongoing customer request. And you can see this little um, JST socket here. Now, conveniently, Diatone broke out the buzzer pins from the flight controller to a cable which is led to the front here. You can see that little plug. And uh, now this can be easily connected to the buzzer. So there you go, that's a good idea. We can also find a pre-installed receiver cable, uh, which is this one here, and it's uh, soldered to the flight controller already. Uh, the black wire is going to a ground pad, red is connected to a five volt pad, and the white signal cable um, is soldered to uh, the S bus pad. Uh, so if you are going to use an FR Sky receiver, you are ready to go. But if you're going to install a FlySky receiver running the IBUS protocol, which is a non-inverted protocol, you will need to resolder this white signal cable uh, to UART6, um, which is one of those pads on the back side of the flight controller here. Uh, be aware of the fact that UART3, which can be found on this side of the flight controller here, um, is used for TBS Smart Audio already. 
So you should take that into account when configuring the flight controller in Betaflight. Now I'm going to install this FlySky um, A86 micro receiver and luckily uh, this little connector here uh, perfectly fits into the receiver socket. So besides from resoldering the signal wire to U at 6 on the flight controller, uh, this is a very convenient solution. Well, I'm planning to install the receiver on, on top of the stack somewhere in here. But uh, as you can see, if you take another look from the side, uh, the whole stack uh, sits up very high um, on these plastic washers. There's lots of space beneath there. So um, it's going to be a very tight fit up here. And what I'm going to do is uh, I will just remove one or two of these plastic washers um, on every column. And then there should be enough space to uh, install the receiver on top. I presume that this can be easily done since the stack is held together by four long nylon screws, uh, which are inserted from below see them here and secured by nylon nuts on top of the stack right there. So it's just four screws to deal with and uh, that should be not a major problem. At the end of this video I would like to emphasize the extraordinary build quality of this tiny micro. It looks and feels really nice and solid. The components are well chosen and the overall construction is Excellent. So I'm I'm really looking forward to flying this. Right. I hope this video was of any help. Thanks for watching. Bye.